welcome. Um, it's great to see all of you. Hey, everyone. Hey, let's all just wave and smile at each other. It's just great. So without further ado, uh, please give a warm, let's all do some snaps on the screen maybe. We can't hear you, but we can see it. A warm welcome to our speaker today, Tenteya Yamoka. Yamaoka, and I'm so excited to be here, a part of this Creative Mornings, Brisbane's first virtual event. First of all, I'd like to thank Hilary Wall and everybody else from the Creative Mornings team for organizing this event and making this virtual theme of purpose come to life. Now, I work as a registered psychologist and I've spoken to many people during this pandemic about the topic of purpose. I think it's a time when we're all thinking about and reflect upon, reflecting upon our purpose. And that is because we've experienced a lot of changes in our life, more than we've ever expected. And there's a lot of people who had had to adapt their situation, whether it be working from home, um, losing their jobs, or transferring their business from um, their physical location to online it's been quite a transformative experience that we've all had during this pandemic. So when we think about the word purpose, I believe there's many different definitions according to your culture, where you grew up, what type of family values you may have grown up with. That word can mean a array of different things. So if you're all willing to share and to join in, could you please get on the chat box and start typing maybe what your definition of the word purpose is? And I'm going to read them out randomly if you're willing to share. So your definition of purpose. And there's no right or wrong answers here it says, the reason I get up, a reason for being, a reason to live, feeling you have meaning in your life, finding fulfillment, a reason to do something, a goal I am striving towards. And as you continue typing um, your responses to the word purpose, the definition that I have chosen is the dictionary definition, which is the reason for someone or something to exist. And in this context of everything that's going on, I believe that many people, their purpose or their identity has been shaken up in some form. And that is because our purpose is heavily tied to our work or what we do. And many people aren't able to live life in the same way they were able to pre-pandemic. So our jobs, our identity, who we are, is kind of feeling a little bit uncertain or unstable just because that future that we once thought that we knew so well about has suddenly changed. Now, despite this, I think the emotions that we may experience through going through this pandemic might be stress, anxiety, depression, or maybe for some people it's about curiosity, innovation, and being creative. Whatever it may be, you know, change is the only constant. So I want to introduce you to this quote by Dan Gilbert. And he says, human beings are works in progress that mistakenly think they're finished. The person you are is as transient, as fleeting, as temporary as all the people you've ever been. The one constant we have in our life 
is change. Now, I think that change also refers to the different emotional experiences that we may be having or the different circumstances that we might be a part of. So if change is the only constant, I think it's really important to remember that this new world that we're going to be a part of post pandemic is going to be something different to what we were used to. And we're going to be living in this new world, this new normal. And while we are transferring in a way to the other side, I think it's really important to think and reflect upon our purpose. Now, when we think about our purpose, there's both a primary and secondary meaning to the word. So our, our primary focus or meaning is to identify that which is important to us and to understand our values and know what really matters deep in our hearts. Whereas when you think about the secondary aspects of purpose, that is to understand your goals, your objectives, and what you're moving forward towards. And I believe pre-pandemic, a lot of people have been thinking about maybe the secondary um, meaning of purpose, which is to create, to make, to produce. And I think that in itself is not enough to sustain mental health and well-being. What we really need to do, first of all, is to identify our purpose and the primary aspects of our being. So how we can do that is to introduce this philosophy of ikigai to our lives. Now, ikigai in Japanese means reason for being or life's values. And I think that if we can incorporate ikigai into our life and do things that makes us feel alive, then we're able to maintain mental health and well-being. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the whiteboard and to draw what that ikigai Venn diagram looks like so you can understand what elements are included in this word. So bear with me for one moment. All right, so can you all see the whiteboard? If you, if you can, can you put your thumbs up? All right. So when we think of our ikigai, we can think of it in these four different elements. Our passion, doing things that we love, Our mission, understanding what the world needs and how we can make a contribution. Our profession, what we can be paid for. and our vocation, understanding our skills and what we, we are good at. So when those four elements align in our lives, our passion, mission, profession, and vocation, then there we have it. We have our purpose or what you can call your ikigai. Now, I believe the reason why this Venn diagram has become quite popular it is because it includes both the practical and spiritual elements in our life. We can't have the primary without the secondary 
And having the secondary in itself is not enough. And the secondary is just working, for example, in a job that you might not be passionate about. Now, if I asked my Japanese grandmother what her definition of ikigai might be, it's quite different to the definition of this diagram. And I think because of the different cultures that we are a part of, we are taught different values to maintain. And for my grandmother, um, my Obachan Kimi, she worked as a kimono consultant for over 50 years of her life. And she didn't retire until the age of 80. And what she did for her job was to help people choose different patterns made out of silk to create a kimono, which is a Japanese dress. So if I asked my grandmother, you know, what is your ikigai? Even though she loved what she was doing for work and she didn't retire for a long time, she wouldn't say that her ikigai is her job or her career. What she would actually say is, Ikigai is those little rituals that I have that keeps me feeling alive. And for her, it was doing things like ceramics or tango dancing or her radio exercises that she did with her friends every single day. However, to have that inner purpose and that aspect of feeling alive in itself in our world today is not enough. And that's why I believe that when we see that Venn diagram and we see those elements such as our profession and understanding our mission, what the world needs and how we can make a contribution is also really an important aspect of the society we live in today. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about two quotes by Japanese authors Ken Moji and Mari Fujimoto. Ken Moji, the author of The Little Book of Ikigai says, Japanese do not need a grandiose motivational framework to keep going, but rely more on the little rituals in their daily routine. Mari Fujimoto, the author of Ikigai and other Japanese words to live by says, Ikigai is something to live for, the kernel of enjoyment and motivation that gets us up each morning and keeps us going each day. Now, when you think about those little rituals, that's something that you can practice daily. And depending on your life and your situation and who you are, that might look different. So for me, for example, my little rituals that I do is to drink my matcha tea every morning, do a little bit of meditation, go for a walk and go for running. You know, whatever it is for you, I think if you can create that little ritual, that's something that we can focus on for mental health and well-being, because that's something that we continuously need to practice even post-pandemic, because we're really uncertain for what's to come. But one thing that we can try to clarify within ourselves during this time is our values. And values like purpose is a really big word and can mean a lot of different things. So when you think about your values, you can ask yourself questions such as, what do I want to do with my time on this planet? Who do I want to be? How can I spend my time and feel like what I'm creating or making or producing, producing is worth doing? And it's also about connecting to the people that you love. So if you're willing to share It'd be so nice if people can start chatting about their values, whether it be health, diversity, sustainability, whatever it means to you, just to start 
sharing and typing some of the values that you might um, feel that you're connected to in your daily life. Now, my three values are creativity, connection, and community. I started Ikigai Psychology Clinic one year ago because it was really important for me to bring a part of my identity to my work. I really wanted to combine both Eastern and Western philosophies and psychology so that people can really try to combine and learn about both aspects of things, the primary and secondary aspects of purpose. Now, I think it's really important to remember that even though many of us are eager to move on from the situation and to forget about this crazy time, this pandemic we were a part of, it's important to remember how these experiences has taught us so much and we have been able to come together as a community. And it's so rare for everyone at the same time to be experiencing the same thing. And not one person hasn't been affected by this pandemic. So whatever it is that you have learned or experienced, I think it's really important to really take that with us also into the new world when restrictions begins to lift. And that might be to think about your values and to understand within yourself what's important to you. Because I believe that many people um, pre-pandemic has already been thinking about how the world was turning upside down. It's not that the pandemic made the world turn upside down. It was already turning and the things that we were doing hadn't been working for us very well as a society. If we look at, for example, the statistics that is one in every four people experience a mental health problem. So that means that our systems isn't really sustainable. So why not take the time to really reflect and to think about how we can improve our life and our systems so that we can move forward towards a new world where we take this experience from what we've learned throughout the pandemic with us and not to forget. So I would like to end here and to ask anybody um, if they have any questions. Uh, I'm happy to talk here online. If you wanted to um, have any questions, you can chat on the chat box or I think Hillary was going to um, organize a or moderate a conversation. Yes, I, I put it in the group chat. I don't think we've gotten any questions put in there now, but um, it okay. looks like they're starting to come in here. Um, Fayez has asked, how did you find your passion, Tuntea? Um, I found my passion through really just looking inwards and thinking about the things that I really enjoy doing, for instance, as a child. And for me, I've always been such a curious person and I really like making and creating things. And that's why, you know, my work as a psychologist, I believe, is not only just to listen, but to really make and create those images of what that person might be experiencing in their life. And I get to really use my imagination in my work. And I guess that's how I found my passion, is just to reflect and to think about what I used to like doing when I was young, because I believe that that passion is a part of our identity, our DNA. So if you can connect to that, um, that can really bring a lot of joy to your life. Um, Tentea, they also have another question. Um, uh, 
Camilla wants to know, what were the questions that you asked? You listed a few questions when you were talking about people, how they can discover their values. Do you remember yes, those? Uh, uh, yes, so you can ask yourself things like, what do you want to do with your time on this planet? What sort of person do you want to be? What personal strength or qualities do you want to develop? So these are the type of questions that you can ask yourself to find your values. Or you can also ask yourself things like, how can I build connections between me and my community? What do I wanna share with the world? Um, there are some great questions in here. Um, another one is, well, there are sort of two that I think can go around, uh, along together. Um, how do you remind yourself to go back to your values uh, when it's so easy to get bogged down? And someone else has asked, when difficult things happen and you find yourself straying from your values, what are the ways you can connect to them again? I think it's really important to really have those daily rituals that I was talking about. So let's say if you had those daily rituals and you paused each moment to stop, to think about what's important to you each day, then if you're reminded of your values and you remind yourself of your intentions, then it's really difficult to forget if it's something that it's strongly a part of you. And if you stray away from your values, you will notice that there is something that's not quite right. You'll notice yourself feeling a little bit more stressed or anxious or having these thoughts about yourself, like what's happening? What am I doing with my life? That's when you should stop and pause and look inwards and ask yourself, what is it that I actually want? And not to feel guilty or feel bad that you're asking yourself those questions because sometimes it can be really hard and it can be painful but it's necessary in order to be able to live your life aligned with your values. Thanks Tantea. There's a couple more here that we'll uh, go through. The next one is someone's asking about um, where all four of those circles meet and they're asking, Sheena's asked, can you mix two subsections to form your ikigai um, like one thing that mixes money and what you're good at and then another thing that you love and helps the world but doesn't give you <laughs> money does ikigai always have to be a combination of all four things I definitely don't think that ikigai always needs to be a combination of all four things I think that's just one way that diagram is just one way to try to get you to start thinking about your ikigai so I believe as long as you have that feeling of being alive, that's when you know that you have Ikigai. And maybe, you know, you're practicing in a passion project, but you're not getting paid to do it. Um, and you might be working in another job that you might not necessarily enjoy. If you have that thing that you are passionate about and you commit to practicing it, who knows what will happen in the future? So it's just about really just connecting to your values, your passions, and it's not all, only about just encompassing all four things at once. When you do, I feel that's when you feel that you have purpose, but that's only one way to interpret what purpose means. Um, this one I think is really uh nice question for right now how how do you accept that you may not be who you used to be and how do you move forward defining yourself as you are now so redefining yourself after adversity and challenge how do you mm. um how do you redefine yourself after adversity and challenge i guess it's really important to take a step back and to realize that person that went through adversity and challenge is you. And to really incorporate yourself in that challenge into this new form or this new person that you are. Um, I think that's how I understand 
Is it how to incorporate um, the different challenges that you've had before into the new person that you are? I'll see if um, that person messaged me privately. So I'll see if they will elaborate on that. Um, in the meantime, maybe one, one or two more mm -hmm. here. Um, oh, Rochelle has asked, the other half of your background is from Ghana. Do you incorporate any of your African heritage and philosophy into your <laughs> practice? She says she's thinking specifically of ad Adinkra symbols. Um, I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but she'd love to hear if there are other ideas that come from your Ghanaian culture and shout out <laughs> to you from another half Ghanaian person. <laughs> Hi, Rochelle. I've never met you before, but I'm so glad that you made that shout out. Um, I wish that I knew more about my Ghanaian culture and heritage and I haven't been back to Ghana for such a long time. Um, I went back when I was in my 20s, but it's been over 10 years since I've been able to connect back to my heritage. But I believe that, you know, even though Japan and Ghana seemingly look so different, there's a lot of similar aspects because we're from a collectivist culture. And I guess when I think about my Ghanaian roots and how I bring that to my work, it's just being the person that I am. I try to frame things in a way that I take in consideration all different aspects and cultures. So in a way, even though I don't have a Ghanaian name for my practice, I really feel connected to my roots. I just need to spend more time discovering more about that side of my identity. Um, a couple of people are interested in this question uh, right now with uh, perhaps people who have lost their jobs. Um, Jess from Miami mm -hmm. has asked, our jobs are our identity. You said earlier, our jobs are our identity. Could you please expand a little bit more on this and what would you suggest to change this? Mm. So can you just say that question one more time? Sure. Um, Jess types, you said earlier, our jobs are our identity. Could you please expand a little bit more on this? And what would you suggest to change this? Hmm. I guess our jobs are our identity because that's how our society has constructed how we live. However, I believe that our jobs isn't our identity, as in it's something that we do, but it's not necessarily who we are as an individual, as a person. There's also a separate part of yourself that is, that is quite different maybe sometimes from what you do. So I think it's really important to continue and to elaborate and to define, you know, different characteristics that you might have or different skills that you want to develop or strengthen that might not have to do with your job. Um, and then you will see that, you know, there's this other part of me, this other side of me, and you can also grow and develop that. Um, we'll, we'll do maybe one or two more here. So um, a lot of great questions today, everybody. Thanks for putting them in. Um, Jackie has asked, do you have any tips for when self-doubt creeps in when you're trying to find and live your creative purpose? I think, you know, a lot of people um, experience self-doubt and it's such a normal thing. So when self-doubt creeps in, I think it's really important to be kind to yourself in that moment and ask yourself, you know, what am I criticizing here? And am I being too critical? And if you can try to look at yourself from a third eye or another perspective, and that might be kind of stepping outside of yourself for a moment and then seeing somebody that's really brave who wants to try something new can be really helpful. And just to remind yourself, it's normal. Every time somebody tries something new, they experience self-doubt because they don't have any experience or confidence in what they do because they haven't tried it. But the more you try, the more you practice, the more you get used to it, that voice of self-doubt will begin to decrease. So it's completely normal 
I think that's one thing that you can, um, one tip that you can use um, is just to remind yourself, oh, it's okay for me to doubt myself sometimes. And maybe, am I, maybe I'm just being a little bit too harsh on myself. And the critical voices that I tell myself isn't always true. It might be just a thought you're having instead of it being a fact. Um, let's do one more here. Uh, Matt has asked, in your grandmother's example, her ikigai activities were separate from her work. How important is it to seek an ikigai in your job? Do you think we may get more pleasure from our passions without the burden of trying to make money from it? I guess it's, you know, according to what type of culture or society we live in um, and which generation we're a part of as well, how we define whether we have ikigai in our work or not might mean different things. And that's because, for instance, um, in our time now, we spend a lot of our hours in our day at our work. And I think that's why we want to try to find something that we enjoy doing. For example, nine to five, where that be our passion. But you're right, sometimes it can get a bit of a burden if that becomes something that we're doing all the time. We might be feel, feeling like we're burnt out. But I think it's just about trying to maintain that balance because it's not always possible to do what you love and get paid for it. But if you can do what you love regardless, who knows what might transpire out of that. And I think if you can pro focus on that process of building the skills and doing what you love, then you never know what can happen and just being hopeful for that. Hey, um, Tantea, is there anything else you wanted to close out before we um, go back to Eight Man for a tune to dance us out? Um, I guess I just wanted to say that uh, if you are experiencing, you know, stress or challenge at this time, um, I want to I want you to know that you're not alone. Um, one in four people experience mental health problems, so if you if you need assistance or help. Don't be afraid to reach out. There are so many avenues that you can go through um, to be able to get that help. So for example, right now, um, Medicare has been providing a rebate for people who wants to seek assistance from a psychologist through telehealth. And there's lots of different options for yourself, like speaking to your GP and getting a mental health care plan or just reaching out and finding someone within your area or who you connect to, to talk to. So don't be ashamed to get help because it's so normal to experience challenge time to time. And it's better to do it with someone than alone. Oh, I can't hear. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, I really think there was a real purpose and a real reason that you were, um, Tantea and I set up her talk about eight or nine months ago. So it's been a long time in the making, and uh, I couldn't imagine a better speaker for, for this month. So thank you so much. I know that we all really appreciate it and uh, appreciate your, your words and your way this morning. Thank you. Let's all give no Tantea worries. some snaps to the screen. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> Have a great morning. See you. Bye, Nara.